Hey guys, it's Haven here. Welcome back to my channel. So today I am going to be giving you some tips on how I got into UF24. Um, I just want to say first off as a disclaimer, I am not trying to brag about any of my grades or test scores or anything like that. I just want to let you know what my application looked like. So hopefully it can give you an idea of what they're looking for um, in a applicant. So I'm just going to give you a quick rundown of all my notes that I wrote in here. Um, first off, I'm going to get into my stats and test scores. So for the SAT, I took it two times. The first time I got an 800 on the reading and writing section, which was a perfect score. And I got a 690 on the math. And that was a 1490 total. So I was really, really happy with that score. Um, I just figured I would take it one more time to see if I could get my math score up at all. But um, when I took it the second time, I got a 720 on the reading and writing because I wasn't really focused on it as much and I got a 730 on the math which was a 40 point increase from before. So I was really happy with that. Um, I got a 1450 total on that SAT but um, as you probably know the way the SAT is uh, looked at at most colleges and UF is they take your highest reading score, your highest math score, doesn't matter how many times you've taken it, doesn't matter which test the scores are from, and they will combine those to make your super score. So my super score was a 1530, which I was really, really happy with. Um, I thought that was probably one of the strongest things on my application. You know, a lot of people excel in other areas like activities, which I didn't really um, have as much in. Um, essay, I think my essay was pretty good, but if you write a good essay, they are going to look at that. So like I said, you don't need to have anywhere near these test scores. You just need to have Probably I would say 1400 to 1500 range. That's the optimal score you want to be in for your super score um, Maybe even 1450 and up um, But yeah, like I said, this is just me guessing you don't need to have, be perfect in any way um, It's just kind of a range so you know where you need to be. I did also take the ACT I don't think this mattered as much. I did submit them both um, but like I said, they're only really going to look at whichever one you did better. Um, I only took the ACT one time and I got a 33 overall, which is pretty good. Um, I didn't think it was that difficult, but some people like the ACT over the SAT. I personally, I liked the SAT better, but um, some people just really excel in one area over the other. So for APs, I am just going to tell you right off the bat. I did not take that many APs. I know people who took way more than I did, but this was because I was dorm rolled. I have heard so many horror stories like, oh, UF doesn't want you if you're dorm rolled. They won't take your credits. They took all of my credits. They took more credits than I was expecting them to. But I do want to stress to you that if you are in, in dorm enrollment and you are worried about not getting into UF because you're dorm rolled, it, it does not matter. I promise you. But the thing is, I did take AP classes as well, so um, just uh, to give you like a little estimate of what I took, I took five classes throughout all four years. Um, at the time I applied, I had taken three classes. I took APUSH, which is AP US History, and I got a five on the test. I took um, AP American Government, I also got a five on that. And I took AP Physics 1, which I got a three on which I, I was really happy about that because that test is hard. That test is like known for being one of the worst, like the worst AP tests out there. And I was so happy that I passed. I almost couldn't believe it because I thought I was going to get a one, but I did get a three. So I was pretty happy with that. I think that looked pretty good on my application. Um, yeah, that's pretty much all of the um, test scores, uh, grade wise, stuff like that. Um, but leading into that, I will tell you my class rank and GPA. Um, weighted, my rank was 5th out of 497, which I was really, really happy with. Um, and unweighted, I think it was about 26 out of 497, which is still pretty good. Um, my weighted GPA was 4.57, and my unweighted GPA was 3.97 at the time I applied because I'd gotten 1B in a one-semester class. Um, 
so yeah it was it was pretty good um my gpa was definitely boosted again like i said from all the dual moment classes um some of the ap classes that i took so activities like i said i was not this was not like my area that i was like oh i was like student body president and all of this stuff like i did not have all of that i was kind of worried because the main thing i heard when looking at these types of videos is that uf likes leadership opportunities which is true it definitely is um and my i really only had one maybe two i did put the second one on there even though it wasn't really much um my one big leadership opportunity was that i was the jv chair captain my junior year and then i my second one that like kind of counted was um youth group treasurer i did that for like a couple months before i like dropped out of youth group but you know it, it counted so that was my second one that i put on there and then other activities that i had that weren't necessarily leadership opportunities um i was in chorus that was a class not a club but i still included it because i was told that um you can still include it even if it is a class because you do concerts and stuff outside of school um i worked four jobs um, they're not a, not at the same time, like consecutively, but I always had a job since I was 16. And then volunteering, I did have um, two years of volunteer experience each somewhere else. Um, I believe it was my sophomore year that I worked at the Brevard Zoo as a zoo team. That's like their teen volunteering program. Um, you would go like once or twice a month and do petting zoo, uh, watch over the kids, stuff like that. And it was like a six hour shift. Um, so that was pretty good. And then my second volunteer opportunity, I really, really enjoyed. That was my assistant cheer coaching. Um, it was with the local rec center, uh, youth league for football and cheer. But I did that, um, I think about twice a week and then there were also games. So maybe like three times a week. Um, so yeah, I did, I didn't have a lot of time on my hands in high school, as you can probably tell. I was a student mentor for disadvantaged um, autistic children. They weren't all autistic. I just had one uh, girl that was autistic, but we would go to the local elementary school in the mornings and we would just kind of hang out with these kids, make them feel um, like they had some sort of like community belonging. It was, it was a really good time um, and I did really enjoy working with the kids. So I did think that looked good on my resume as well. And then I just had like the sort of like little clubs that everybody's in that like really isn't anything special like National Honor Society, Beta Club, um, Fellowship of Christian Athletes. These are the kind of clubs that I almost didn't even put on there. Actually, I don't even think I put Beta Club on there because there wasn't enough space, but those are the type of clubs that you kind of want to stay away from mentioning too much because everybody at your level is in those clubs and they know that you really only have to show up like once a month for like 10 minutes and that's it, like that's all you do in the club. Um, so yeah, those are the kind of clubs that like have very minimal involvement, unless you are like a president or a leader or something like that, then of course, feel free to mention it as much as, as much as you like. But, um, yeah, I was just kind of like, oh yeah, I'm in NHS, so is everyone else. So, <laughs> I mean, it's not that big of a like, woohoo, as much as the other stuff. But, you know, I did put those on there just because. I wanted to fill up the space and put all 10 activities on there. Um, and then another part of the application that I think is really important is the essay. I struggled so much with my essay, I could not tell you, because I was so stressed. I watched so many of these types of videos and they were all like, UF cares about the essay. The essay is like the main thing, you don't wanna mess it up. And I was like, oh crap, like I don't wanna mess it up. <laughs> and um, I, I'm here to tell you, yeah, that's true. I think the essay, is a big part of it. Obviously for my application, I don't think it mattered as much because I had strong areas elsewhere like in testing and GPA and stuff like that. Um, but I did try really hard on my essay and I think it turned out well. Um, I'm not gonna like read it or anything like that. Although if you do want a separate video about essays alone, let me know. So my essay topic was I think the biggest thing I struggled with. I'm gonna say this right now, this is not like law, you don't have to take this like super seriously, but I'm, <laughs> I'm gonna say this right now, please do not write an essay about how corona has affected my life. I mean, maybe that's even an essay topic, I don't know, but like personally, I would not wanna read, because I feel like everybody's gonna do that, you know? 
Like personally, I would not want to read a million essays about the exact same thing. Like, ooh, quarantine shut down my sports season. I have to learn virtually. Like, yeah, everybody does. That's not a unique thing. Like, I'm sorry, I know it sucks. Like, I know it's happening to everybody, but like, if that's what your essay is about, I'm not saying like, don't turn it in. I'm not saying like, don't do it, but it's probably not the best topic that you could have, unless, like I said, it is like a legitimate question that you can choose from, which it might be. I haven't looked at the essay topics, but what I would recommend, um, cause there will be like a couple essays that are like, oh, write about this, but there's usually a question that's like, write about whatever you want. So just write your essay about whatever you want to write about and then just use that question, like free writing, if that makes sense. So um, I went through a couple essay topics and I cycled around and around. I didn't know what to write about. I think I did one about how I didn't make the cheer team my first year because that was like a big boohoo moment in my life. <laughs> and, um, but like it was middle school. Was it really that impactful? I don't know. And then I saw all these videos that were like, oh, don't write about sports. Don't write about not making the team. That's just kind of cliche. So I was like, ooh, maybe I shouldn't do that. And it didn't really feel like it was coming from the heart, you know? And then I wrote another one, which I thought was kind of cool. It was um, how Iron Man inspired me to major in engineering, which I thought was pretty cool because obviously Tony Stark is an engineer. But the thing is, it wasn't really true. Like I loved Marvel and I loved Iron Man, but did he inspire me to be an engineer? Not really. I just, I was just like, oh, engineering makes a lot of money. I'm good at math. Sure. <laughs> but, um, so that essay, I was like, eh, it's okay. It was well written, but it, I wasn't really feeling it. I wasn't really passionate about it. But then, um, this was just kind of like an idea that I came up with at the last second, like at 3 a.m. And I probably wrote it in like 20 minutes and I barely edited it after that. Like I was like, oh, this is it. This is the one. So um, if you don't know me, my last name is Sori Steele. My dad's last name is Sori. My mom's last name is Steele. But I wrote about my last name as a metaphor. So I wrote about my dad's side of the family, which was Sori. And I wrote about all the traits that I got from him, the good ones and the bad ones. And then I wrote about my mom's side of the family, which was Steele. And I wrote again about, again, the good and bad traits that I got from her. And then I wrote about how kind of those traits came together, just like my last name was their two last names coming together. But I think my biggest advice when it comes to choosing an essay topic is you want to write about something that's unique to you, something that nobody else could have written. And that's kind of the thing, even if it's like quirky, even if it's funny, you know, you do want to write something that stands out in a good way. Obviously, you don't want to write something like horrible and have people be like, ooh, that definitely stood out. Um, I would say probably don't write about anything too political or controversial. Just try to pick a unique topic. Try to have it well written. Definitely have somebody else look over your essay. I had like a college advisor from uh, this organization called College Point and she would call me every once in a while and I would send her my essay and she would revise it for free, which was really, really nice. Um, and I did think she helped me a lot during that process. All right, so that was a little bit about me and how I got into UF. Um, I am really rooting for each and every single one of you that watch this video. I really hope that it helped. Do not stress about it. You do not have to have, you know, scores like mine or somebody else's or anything to get into UF. You just have to be the best person you can be. And that's my biggest advice, you know? Make your application the absolute best that it can be, and when you send it out, be proud of it. And you know, even if you don't get in, you did the best you could. At the end of the day, if you're not like a Yale top student, there's not much you can do to change that, but it's fine, it doesn't matter. You don't need to be a Yale or Harvard level quality. You just need to be yourself, and you need to just put your best foot forward, and they will see that. If you are really genuinely trying, they will see it. So I hope this video helped you. Um, let me know in the comments below if you do want me to make a video regarding essay writing because I've kind of been thinking about it. Um, but otherwise, I will see you in the next video. Bye!